Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I am your host, Kiana Cook, and we are here this evening with David Davenport, who is seeking to be your next mayor of Flint. So I'm going to give him a moment to um, tell the city who you are, those who know you, those who don't, and um, let them know why they should vote for you as their next mayor. <laughs> Kiana, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for having me, okay? Mm -hmm. um, my name is David Davenport. Um, as you know, I'm on the Flint uh, Board of Education for mm -hmm. the uh, Flint District. Also, I am a 43-year-old uh, single father. Mm -hmm. um, the reason the people should vote for me is because of the fact that I've been fighting for this, their safety mm -hmm. and their lives for the past two years. Mm -hmm. um, I see things that are going to happen that really don't nobody believe, like the fact that when 56 officers were laid off, I knew the homicide rate was going to skyrocket. Mm -hmm. So my goal was whoever was to remove whoever done that. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I failed at that attempt, uh, being uh, crookedness or whatever happened. The fact is now, to vote for me, you will have someone in the seat that you can trust mm -hmm. um, and that you can respect and that will bring integrity to that seat okay. and will get the job done of bringing Flint uh, where it's supposed to be, um, mm -hmm. up with downtown Flint. Okay. Um, you did mention that you do serve on the Flint Board of Education. Why the mayor's position? Of all the seats and the positions and the elected positions in our city, what made the mayor's um, position in that, in that seat in our city be the, the position that you feel will be best suited for you? Well, I can clearly say that um, when I ran for the school board of education, I was voted in by over 5,000 people. It was 5,600 people voted me in. And they voted me in because I promised them that I would go in and I would make a change or try to make a change and be different. I wouldn't be mm -hmm. the status quo. Mm -hmm. I would be um, uh, what this city needs, okay. a change. The mayor's seat, to me, is a seat that I can handle mm -hmm. everything in the city. Mm -hmm. And as far as education, I'm able to go out and get different grants mm -hmm. to work with the school boards mm -hmm. um, and the superintendent. Um, a plus I do bring also is that I am a school board member. Mm -hmm. I've seen the budgets right. and I know the ins and outs mm -hmm. of the budgets of the school board. Mm -hmm. So now when I transition into the mayor's seat, mm -hmm. I'll be able to uh, work with the school board on a better basis because I already know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So then also that gives me the realm to do things to um, help the people in the city mm -hmm. uh, get to where this city needs to be. Mm -hmm. Bring in jobs, which manual labor jobs, because clearly a lot of these people that are causing the crimes have uh, uh, no college degrees, mm -hmm. okay? Um, then from there, it, it will just allow me to uh, be responsible for the whole city and be able to do things without uh, an eight to one vote like it okay. is on the school board. Okay. Uh, um, you know, I will have to deal with the council, right. but if the council chooses not to uh, go along with something that's going to better the city, then I will bring it straight to the citizens and let them know who, where, when, and why mm -hmm. it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And I expect the citizens to step up and try to remove these people mm -hmm. that won't let the city prosper forward. Um, understanding that our financial situation here in our city, if you were ele elected to be our next mayor, how would you prevent a financial uh, manager from coming in and, and taking over um, this fall or soon? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, a financial manager will come in if he, if it's clear that um, this city is going to be in a deficit right. to where we can't um, pull our own selves out. Right. First, I would have to get in and I would have to look at every line item budget inside of this city, mm -hmm. okay? Because I don't believe a word that the present administration is uh, saying okay. as far as the budget is concerned. Um, I would definitely get in and I would find every little piece or penny mm -hmm. that I could find in different areas to bring to the general fund and I would use that to keep us held up. Um, mm -hmm. As, as I've walked this road in life, I've, I've uh, been, you know, lived on virtually nothing myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not riding around in a big Cadillac, nice suits and da-da-da. It's not that important to me. What's important is keeping a roof over my son's head and clothes mm -hmm. on his back and food in his mouth. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, is, is that would be my main concern as far as the city is con mm -hmm. concerned. 
I wouldn't worry about what people think about what's going on as long as the people in the city are happy. Okay. Um, that, that's basically how I would prevent a financial manager from coming in. If there was a, any kind of deficit reduction plan that was set up by the uh, administration before mm -hmm. they left out, I would follow that completely and um, do the best that I could. Okay. Okay. Uh, I myself just graduated from college uh, recently, and just like that, thank you. Just, um, just like myself, there's many others who um, are recent graduates from college, maybe high school, or who did not finish high school. But the city of Flint is having trouble retaining our youth for many reasons, whether they lose them to death or to other violent um, situations, whether their family leaves or whether they find jobs in other areas. If you were elected mayor, how would you retain our youth in the city and make sure that they prosper and grow here within our city instead of leaving? to an outside or neighboring town or even out of state? Well, at this moment, I'm in college myself. I am at uh, Mott Community College. My major is um, programming, um, uh, computer science programming, okay. security options. So I understand that uh, for the talent to stay here mm -hmm. is very, uh, very important. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we would have to do is um, find a way to keep our youth in the public school system mm -hmm. first. I mean, it's gotten to the point where it's a fight every day right. and they're expelled for 180 days. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that we have to find a way to keep our kids in the system and get educated first, right. okay? Once we do that, then we find recreation for them to be able to do outside of the school system mm -hmm. that's constructive recreation, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, while their parents are working a nine to five or uh, a 10 hour shift or a 12 hour right. shift just to keep a roof over their heads. Right. Uh, we would open up community centers. We would um, open up skating rinks and different things for the 17 through 25 mm -hmm. uh, um, age that would, would like to have something to do. Bring back bowling alleys. Right. There's a lot of things that we could do to keep the youth mm -hmm. here in this city. Mm -hmm. And then we would branch out for those that are trying to get a degree. Right. We would have manual labor jobs here mm -hmm. so they can work until they get their degree and then we would also step out and try to have uh, 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 big businesses and corporations come in where they can take their degrees and put them to work. Right. We um, we see the new businesses that are downtown and, and the um, construction that's going on here and, and turning around the look and, and the image of our downtown Flint. Um, if you were elected mayor, how would you make sure that outlying cities and areas, communities, other states are um, attracted and are, and are informed on what we're doing here in our city to attract more tourists, other residents, um, just people visiting here to increase our economy? Well, the first thing I would have to do mm -hmm. is get this crime under control. Mm -hmm. This is the only municipality in the state that has not been asked by the administration or by the council whether they would like to keep their public safety before it was clearly taken away. Mm -hmm. Whoever done it, it was sickening, it was ridiculous, but we must move past that, mm -hmm. okay? So the first thing you have to do is get crime under control. Mm -hmm. No one wants to come into a city and be afraid that they're gonna get hit by a stray bullet or their family mm -hmm. gonna get hit by a stray bullet. That would be my first priority mm -hmm. is to get crime under control. Mm -hmm. Then, I'll, then I would take the businesses that are here mm -hmm. and see, offer them if see if they need any help to keep prospering. Uh, downtown is going beautiful now. Right. There's no way I would touch downtown mm -hmm. and anything that's going on. Mm -hmm. But what I will do is I will go out to the outskirts, the north side, mm -hmm. the south side, the east side, and I will bring them up to the status of downtown. Okay. But definitely. Um, then I would just basically paint a picture of this is Flint now. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want a tax break mm -hmm. to bring in jobs, we'll bring it to you. You okay. know, um, th that's basically it. This is what you got to do. You got to, safety comes first. That's right. why I don't understand administration. Mm -hmm. Safety comes first. Those are the taxpayers. Those are the ones that pay the taxes. Why would you put their lives in danger by paying off 56 officers and not right. giving Before them a chance? Right, we take a um, break, can you let the audience know how they can contact you or send their questions or concerns if they want to speak with you before they cast their vote? Well, <laughs> you can give me a call at 810-874-0937. And that will be even after I become Flint's next mayor. My phone will stay on. It okay. won't be changed to another number. Okay, and you can also look on um, Spectacle productions.com if you need more information as well. We'll be right back with more with Mr. David Davenport. See you soon.
Underneath everything we are, we are all people. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Only on public access. And so the king ordered his men into battle. And even though he was no longer acting in their best interest, they followed obediently. But what if they didn't? What if they just refused? What if selfish leaders got no support? What if people had the courage to stand up when something wasn't right? What if the government didn't just serve a lucky few? What if it was designed and run for all the people, no matter what race, color, or creed? What if we didn't put up with anything less? What if? Underneath everything we are, we are all people. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Candidates, we are here with David Davenport, and we are going to continue our interview on why you should vote for him as your next mayor. Um, Mr. Davenport, what would you do differently um, with your administration than what's going on with our current administration? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would do a lot differently, you know. Uh, the bottom line is, is that me and my administration, we're going to go in and have salary. And the reason is, is because we're in a deficit now. Mm -hmm. There's no need for everybody coming in draining the till when really we already know it's, it's drained. Mm -hmm. We will take that money, we will put back in the general fund, um, and uh, we will try to build it back up to where we're out of the, out of the red. My staff, uh, I won't have as many appointees. Mm -hmm. I might have... Uh, you know, the most important city administrator, uh, chief, um, uh, uh, financial man, uh, financial director, ooh, budget mm -hmm. director. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I will take the rest of that appointee salary m money mm -hmm. and try to use it to uh, look for federal funds okay. to bring back police officers. I will use it to hire a police officer 